pleasure to present the principal's report on this, the 50th year of the college's operation. Tokyo College is much to be proud of through its, last, through its 50 years of operation, and we need to be grateful for those who have brought us to where we are. I'd like to acknowledge the great generosity of the late Charles Boyd Alexander, the college's benefactor, the vision and drive of the late E.A. Hunt, the college's founder, the confidence of those first 15 students who enrolled in an unknown college, the hard work and dedication of the staff who established the culture and the direction of the college 50 years ago this month. Reaching that milestone is, is good, but we shouldn't be complacent. We must look ahead into the future and look at what agriculture might be like and what a college like this might be like. We've been forging ahead with online learning and we now have 80 individual products online. How will the graduates today, who are graduating today, be working and what will the industry look like? I can see agriculture continuing to change dramatically and we need to keep up with that. I see there will be continued challenges regarding biosecurity and food safety. The recent frozen berries saga has highlighted how fragile our food supply is, how exposed we can be to food poisoning. It also tells us that, that near enough is not good enough for Australian consumers. Consumers set the bar high and expect their food to be 100 per cent safe. So how do we, as food producers, meet this challenge? I believe it is through well-trained people caring for our animals, our land, our crops and our food supply. In Australian agriculture, we always have struggled and will continue to struggle with a skill shortage. And there will always be a demand for well-trained people on the farm managing and running the operation. Given that, I believe much of the staff for our farming will be drawn in the future from elsewhere. I believe it will continue to have a lot of people on 457 visas working in agriculture, seasonal workers and backpackers. I can't see that changing and I think we should come to grips with it and manage it and I think we can benefit from that. I can also see a greater increase in the use of robots doing things on farms such as milking cows and carrying out repetitive tasks. Already that's happening. There's robotic dairies being put in around the countryside and that's continuing and that won't decrease, it'll increase. We'll be still having people coming in on five, four, five, seven visas. We'll be a wealthy country in an area of not other so wealthy, wealthy countries and people look to come to this country to work, such as seasonal workers do, and also backpackers from the Northern Hemisphere, um, and we hope they keep coming to, and they're working on a lot of farms. And fourthly, we need to supervise and give direction to these robots. And that's where we need well-trained agriculturalists from Tokyo to manage these people passing through our agriculture and also managing robots, which there'll be more of. We must keep adapting and keep revising what we're doing and adapting to change. And we have to lead that change for a better agriculture, a better community. So I therefore have much confidence in the graduates who are receiving their awards today. We're very proud of them. They walk across the stage in the footsteps of those who've gone before them. They have gone Students that have gone across this stage have forged outstanding careers, making a significant contribution to this country. And I'm sure these students will do the same. Just what a tremendous heritage and legacy Tokel has. I mean, 50 years, and yet you look around the building, you look around the staff, you look around the students, and, and I guess it just reinforces that you know, 50 is the new 30. And it must be that young feeling of the college and its staff that helps maintain the momentum, maintain the enthusiasm and maintain the progress that it's experiencing. And I'm sure you'd all agree with me that's in no small part due to the energy and enthusiasm of its principal, Dr Cameron Archer, and its deputy principal, Mr James Hawke. And I think we should pause and congratulate them for again their efforts in this last year. Challenges, not so much how do we draw upon that legacy, but how do we use it as a building block for the next 50 years and to prepare the future waves of graduates, the future wave 
of students, of workers, of participants in the agricultural industries. And I don't think there's ever been a more important time to have the conversation about the importance that agriculture plays, not only in the history of this nation, but in the future of this nation. I'm constantly reminded of the increasing demand on tax funds for our education systems and our health systems as our population here in Australia grows. I think agriculture has a tremendous role to play if invested in wisely, if supported and if the innovations, if the innovative people, the talented staff, the talented students are encouraged to make the most of the opportunities presented by our natural resources to help not only grow the economy, earn export dollars, but help bring those dollars in to help alleviate and help fund some of our education and some of our health needs as a nation going forward. Exports are what bring new money into this country, and agriculture continues to play an essential role in this country's um, trade balance and ensuring that we have a healthy inflow of export earnings. Now, graduates walking out of these doors here today into the marketplace um, are probably walking into the most positive agricultural environment we've seen for a long period of time. Positive because of a number of factors, but the most significant one being the simple maths of more people on the planet with higher incomes, therefore requiring more agricultural products, whether that be food, whether that be fibre. We continue to see rapid growth in emerging economies across the globe. And whilst there's a lot of talk about China, let's not forget Southeast Asia right on our, our nearest neighbours with 600 million people and a growing middle class that is putting more mouths in a middle class um, part of the economy every year than the total Australian population. More than 25 million new middle class consumers in Southeast Asia every year. These are enormous opportunities for us in terms of agricultural production and our future as agricultural producers and exporters. We've built this reputation as being a safe, clean, green producer of food, and that puts us in a good position in the global marketplace. It's now up to the current generation of those walking out these doors to look at what's the next piece of positioning for Australia to capitalise on this global market. Hello, Mr. Media. Bronze medal for excellence in the course. Graduated with merit. Nathan Tamuja. Bronze medal for excellence in the course. Graduated with merit. going to care about your career as much as you do. And so make sure you invest in yourself. Make sure you take time to think about where it is and what it is you want to do. Because at the end of the day, you've got to be happy and you've got to love what you're doing. And if you're working in agriculture, I find it hard not to do both of those things. So to the parents, to the friends and supporters 
of the students here today. I thank you for your commitment to them. I look forward to what they bring to agriculture as we enjoy this newfound connection between urban communities and agriculture as they realise they do need food and they do need fire. Thank you very much.